Let's have a look at networks using blocks. So this is the really first part where VGG made a significant difference conceptually in terms of how people started thinking about network designs. Namely, not in terms of defining individual layers, but designing blocks and then composing the network out of blocks. Okay, so for that, we first need a VGG block. So the VGG block does nothing particularly special besides actually taking a number of convolutions as an argument and number of channels. And what it then does is it just performs a sequential composition. In this case, I turned on hybrid sequential. That's because I'm going to use my JIT compiler to make this go a little bit faster. And I'm just adding one convolution after the other. And in the end, I just perform max pooling. And that returns a block. So rather than sequential, I just use hybrid sequential. That's all that's needed for now in order to activate the JIT compiler, or at least to tell the JIT compiler that this can be used. Okay. So let's recall the VGG architecture. We've got a couple of those blocks. In the ends, we've got three dense layers. Okay. So the architecture that I'm going to use is one where I first have 64 channels and just one convolution, 128 channels, one convolution, then 256 channels and two convolutions, 2 and 512, 2 and 512. And so now, and this is the nice thing, basically my network looks like a very simple for loop, right? So I start again with hybrid sequential because the overall block is, you know, hybridizable. And I'm adding to this network individual blocks. So net add of VGG block of number of convolutions and number of channels, it adds an entire block rather than just a layer. Then in the end, I add, well, three dense layers, and that's it. It's very clean, right? Then in the end, yeah, I just go and execute VGG of conv arch. So that's the architecture. If I wanted to pick something else, I could have, for instance, omitted one layer or added one more or one more block. That's quite straightforward. So let's have a look at how much memory it uses. Well, we have, you know, 112 by 112, 64 channels, and 128 channels, 256 channels, 512, 512. So this is, after all, exactly what we picked here, right? So the top line here, conf arch, that defines exactly what we get. Now, and lo and behold, that's what we have here. And in the end, the behemoth uh, dense layers, as you would expect them. Okay. So then, well, since we want to train this and we want to train in a reasonable time, we're actually going to make our network a little bit smaller. So the thing that we'll do is we'll simply divide all the sizes and the ratios by, you know, four, and that makes sure that everything is considerably more concise so we can actually run this in efficient time. And I generate from my small architecture, my network, and I hybridize. So hybridization now tells the network, okay, the first time, go and execute it, look at, you know, all the parameters that you have, and then afterwards, don't bother about bothering Python anymore, just use the framework directly in the back end to perform computation. Okay. So, and then we train. And as a matter of fact, if you were to do this, you would have to wait for about maybe one and a half minutes per pass. So I'm not going to do that right now, or at least let's look at the outcome first. You basically have a learning rate that's still quite small, five passes, mini batch size of 128, and of course you run on the GPU. So this is exactly the same code as what we saw before in the previous two cases, and then you just iterate to the data. And since this is in our book, the trainer from chapter five, it's just train underscore chapter five. If 
I were to invoke this now, you see that it takes forever and it gets you down to about eight and a half to nine percent error after five epochs. If you want to get it a little bit better, you might have to use more epochs. But that's all that you need to know when it comes to training using VGG on Fashion MNIST.